Hey everyone, I'm Gareth Crocker, and this ridiculous blue room is my writing studio. Believe it or not, I write under these lights. Um, I have it in my head that it helps with uh, creativity. Anyway, Penguin has asked me to read an extract from my latest novel called Never Let Go. It's a high-octane combination thriller love story about a famous American author whose young daughter is murdered in a botched kidnapping. Just as our protagonist is about to give up on his own life, well, everything changes. Alright, um, so you're going to have to bear with me. I have a terrible voice. So if you can, just try and picture Morgan Freeman doing this. That should help. Alright, here we go. Reese stared at the screen and watched as the stranger pushed something into the mouth of the mailbox and then hurried off. His first instinct was to write off the stranger as a crackpot looking to capitalize on his misery in some way. But the truth was that nothing about the man's demeanor suggested that he was off balance. He seemed normal, well-spoken even, educated. In fact, Reese realized, the man had sounded as though he wasn't entirely sure of whether or not he was doing the right thing, as if reluctant to share what he presumed to know. More thoughts stacked up in Reese's mind. How could the stranger possibly help him? What was he offering? And why could it only be revealed to him in parts? Reese stared down the hall to where his gun was waiting for him, and then turned his attention to the front door. He was at another chance intersection. And while the rational part of him remained convinced that this was nothing more than another distraction, something else to delay the inevitable, certain aspects of the stranger's speech intrigued him, as did the timing of his visit. After a brief deliberation, he made up his mind. In the context of the past few weeks, one final detour was hardly going to make any material difference to his suffering. Taking a breath, he hurried through the front door and immediately had to shield his eyes from the brilliant sunshine and felt like he hadn't been outside in days. He quickly shuffled down the stairs and, to his surprise, began to run down the driveway. As he moved, he could feel his pulse gathering pace in the soles of his feet. What had the man left for him? As the end of the driveway appeared into view, something electric flickered under his skin. Why would some stranger offer to help him? And how could he? Ruby was gone. Arriving at the gate, Reese pushed open the back of the mailbox and reached inside. His fingers felt and then snatched at a small envelope. He tore it open and quickly withdrew its contents, a single white card. Written on the card were just six words. Words that seemed to buckle and distort in his eyes, a sentence without meaning. What the hell was this? I can bring your daughter back. Okay, well that's it. Uh, despite the horrible voice, um, I hope it was it sounded enticing. Um, if, you do, if you do get a chance to read Never Let Go and you'd like to drop me a line, please do so. I'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, and just before I go, just to show you how ridiculous I am, um, I've got the whole room on a remote control linked to lights. And depending on what I'm writing, what the mood is, uh, I can change it. It's kind of cool. It's also very juvenile, I know. Anyway, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you ask me how the world should be, I'll say honey should drip from the apple tree. Daisies should grow on every street.